transportation networks make it possible to transport goods. They increase opportunities for access to education, healthcare, entertainment, and jobs. And electricity generation is vital to fueling our societies. But despite the benefits these things bring, they often replace natural ecosystems and the benefits they provide. Covering the soil reduces water retention and can cause floods. It can get rid of sources of food, medicine, wood, and animal feed. Clearing a forest will release carbon into the air, contributing to climate change. And it can eliminate things you might not think about, like beauty. These ecosystem services offer a value to us. We often ignore them because they're given for free, but if we have to pay for a similar service provided by humans, we can pay millions and millions of dollars. Free isn't the same thing as has no value. Only focusing on the human-provided services and infrastructure ignores an important part of the picture. What are the actual trade-offs? Is a road project going to damage important resources people depend on by more or less than it gives in transportation benefits? Are mining operations going to destroy water sources with pollution? If so, what's the appropriate compensation for the damages. We need to understand the total picture of exactly what is being gained, what is being lost, who is gaining and who is losing, to do an economic analysis and make sure the right decisions are being made. For example, in 2010, the governments of Brazil and Peru signed an energy agreement that included plans for hydroelectric plants in the Peruvian Amazon River Basin, the main intent being the export of electricity for Brazil. Conservation Strategy Fund and the Wildlife Conservation Society looked at one of the plans for a hydroelectric plant on the Inambari River. The firm that would be developing the dam would earn between 0.5 and 1.2 billion dollars for the development, but in Peru about 96,000 hectares of Amazon forest would be deforested and 4,000 people displaced. This would cause a loss of agricultural and mining productivity, a loss of biodiversity, and the release of greenhouse gases. Overall it represents costs of over 1.3 billion dollars for society. Additionally, the developer proposed selling the power at 70 dollars per megawatt hour, which was higher than the price of electricity in Peru and Brazil at the time. This would result in a further loss to Peruvian society of 200 million dollars. Overall, the project would not generate a net gain to society. The development firm, clearly a winner, but not the Peruvian people who are paying all the environmental and social costs. In May 2014, in the face of criticism from a range of groups and information from the analysis, the Peruvian government officially cancelled the project. Governments financing large-scale infrastructure can't always see the most efficient outcome, because they might not have all the information needed to choose the best alternative for society, including information on the impacts to nature services. What is more black and white and easy to see to them is all the money and jobs the project will create, but it's an incomplete view. A private company would never dig a random hole and fill with concrete because it's sort of financially pointless. But a government might subsidize something like that because they see that it's creating jobs. Or they may support a dam project that will bring in money and create jobs even though it's not actually better for the people. Good economic analysis clearly communicated to the public and decision makers can help sort out good and bad infrastructure investments. Or otherwise quantify how infrastructure developers should be accountable for damages. Identifying the trade-offs and all the costs and benefits needs to be a part of the process from the beginning so we can build a better and more efficient society where nature is a part of the picture. Conservation Strategy Fund offers economics training focusing on comprehensive cost-benefit analysis analysis of infrastructure development to determine a project's real trade-offs and feasibility. They also offer online tools like the Hydro Calculator and Roads Filter so anyone can calculate the potential impacts of hydroelectric dams and road projects worldwide. For more information go to conservation-strategy.org.